welcome back to another vlog. Today, um, I've come down to a place called Minis Bay in Kent, just on the coast here. Um, it's the middle of the day, so it's not normally the best time of the day to shoot images, but like a lot of you, I suppose, when you live in the real world and photography is not your, your vocation, Sometimes you're limited to the time where you can get out. And this week I'm on late turn um, at work, which means I'm not getting in till early hours of the morning. So sunrise is uh, not an option for me. And by the time sunset comes around, I'm back at work. So the only other option is to come out in the middle of the day. That's not always a bad thing. There are certain styles of photography that lend itself to shooting in the middle of the day and I'm hoping today to show you one of them. I'm just on my way to a location that I know in Minis Bay and the plan is to try and get a long exposure um, of this particular image and during the daytime it comes out quite nice. Um, so I'm on my way there now and I'll see you when we get there. Well, I'm uh, at the location now that I had in mind and the tide is just about on its way in. Uh, you can see here, these are the steps I'm um, after photographing. I'm uh, hoping I get a nice high tide and the sea will actually surround these stairs. And with either a six or 10 stop filter, you can really smooth the water out and get some movement in the, the clouds and really create quite a a nice minimal ethereal almost looking um, shot. Um, I've got the full intention of turning that into a black and white image and I prefer to use Silver Effect Pro from um, I think it's now a Google company um, to convert from the raw file into a black and white but uh, looks like we've got a little bit of time to kill at the moment waiting for the tide to come in. High tide itself is not till um, two o'clock. It's now 12, um, but I'm hoping the stairs will be covered before two. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there. The tide's coming in reasonably fast. But uh, as so often with landscape and seascape photography, it's just a matter of waiting for the conditions to be right. And uh, it's looking quite cloudy, quite moody. Uh, and I'm hoping that's gonna add to the image um, with the long exposure. In the meantime, I'm uh, relaxing in this lovely shelter on the coast here. Um, it's time just to try and get this shot set up as quickly as I can. Not sure whether or not this um, tripod is going to want to be on the low side or the high side, but uh, we'll have a look. I think what I like to try and do is get the camera out handheld and just kind of um, get it framed up as best I can while it's not on the tripod and then once you know what your composition is going to be you can try and get your, your tripod back in that position afterwards it's a lot easier to work out your composition that way than trying to manoeuvre the, the um, camera on the tripod so uh, we'll have a look see what kind of composition I've got the um, 
5D Mark III with a 17 to 40 mil f4 lens on and I'm probably going to go for a, a wider angle and yeah I actually think you know it works quite well kind of hip height um, but we'll we'll have a go let's have a look see whether or not I need to raise this up And uh, I think I got me a composition there, about there. So we'll try that now. I think I've got my composition kind of worked out. Um, I'm kind of centralizing the stairs within the frame and I'm making sure that the top of the stairs or the, the barrier for the stairs, the handrail, doesn't break the horizon line uh, of the sea. I think it works best if you you either want to really break it and go much further above it or stay below the horizon line. If you was just, just to break it compositionally, it just it doesn't look right. So that's where I am at the moment. I'm uh, just putting on the foundation kit for some filters. And I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to need a um, polarizer. Let's have a look. All right, so I think I'm actually going to go. I don't know whether to go six or ten stop. I'm actually getting a exposure at ISO 100 um, at f8, an 80th of a second. Now, if you use um, the Lee filter app, you can put in your um, exposure, which is an 80th of a second, 50, 60, 80th of a second, and it will tell you what your exposure time should be, depending on whether you're using a 6, 10, or 15 stop filter. Um, I only have the 6 and the 10. The 6 stop filter would give me an exposure time of 0.8 seconds. With a 10 stop, it would give me an exposure of 13 seconds. Now, I think the 10 stop will be slightly better in this circumstance. It will really help smooth the water out. So I'm actually going to go for the 10 stop filter. Now I want to pre-focus now before I put the filter on. Also, while I remember, I will put it on um, manual focus. I will zoom in to where I want to focus on, which is actually going to be the handrail, which is about there, that's fine. That's now focused. Well, the one thing about the M50 that I really don't like is the battery life is terrible. Right in the middle of uh, doing that, I thought I'd come back and turn the camera off uh, rather, than, rather than making you wait a minute and a half. And uh, on the screen was a message saying, please replace the battery pack. So at this stage, I'm not quite sure at what point um, that stopped. But I tried a 10 stop, which came out quite nice. And I tried a 10 stop with a circular polarizer. Now the polarizer never really added anything to the scene other than just extending uh, the, the exposure time, which never really enhanced the image anymore. So I'll put the image up on the screen of the one without the circular polarizer. Well, you can see my composition is slightly off here. It's not quite lined up correctly and in post what I actually did was I did convert it to a mono image 
but then I lowered the opacity of the mono layer to allow some of the color to shine through. Um, makes for a bit more of a, a desaturated look, which I quite liked. I've actually changed up the composition a little bit now. I've actually uh, extended the tripod uh, to the full length, which basically means now I'm kind of uh, shooting down on the stairs. Uh, so it's actually more center in the frame. Um, I'm not quite sure at this stage which one I prefer, but I'll let you be the judge. This image, um, again, is ISO 100, F8, and it's given me an exposure time of 25 seconds with the Lee Big Stopper, the 10 stop filter. And what I've done now, just to uh, show you the difference really, is I've taken exactly the same shot with a tripod um, set high and instead of a 10 stop filter this time I've actually used the Lee little stop filter, the six stop and it gave me an exposure time of uh, 0.6 seconds at F8 ISO 100. I'll put that one up on the screen for you now and uh, let you decide which one you prefer, whether you prefer the, the six stop or the 10 stop. Leave a comment below and uh, let me know. The uh, rain has just started, it's a bit drizzly out here now and I've got a couple of images out of that that I quite like so I think I'm going to call that a day um, down here at Minis Bay. Minis Bay here, um, you can walk all the way along Minis Bay uh, to Reculver. Um, and if you don't know Reculver, Reculver is a couple of towers um, that I've done a couple of vlogs on in the past and I'll link to one uh, here, I think it is. I'll put a link up here and one in the description um, to a vlog of Reculver. It's a nice walk. Um, depending on how fast you walk. It's, it's a fair distance, a few miles, um, but during the summer months especially, it's a nice, nice walk along the coast um, and it's quite a popular cycle route as well. But uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. There probably won't be a video up uh, for another week or two now because I'm actually going away in a few days to uh, Dartmoor. Uh, myself and the wife are having a bit of a break down at Dartmoor and hopefully there'll be a, a couple of vlogs coming from that area uh, when we come back. So if that's something you'd like to see, then please consider subscribing, hit the bell so you're notified on the uh, uploads when I upload them. And if you wouldn't mind just giving us a, a thumbs up on this video, it does really help with the YouTube algorithm. But again, uh, thanks very much for watching and thank you to all the people that have subscribed so far, I really do appreciate it. Um, in no small part, that's probably due to the Facebook group, Utogs, that I joined. And uh, in the small time that I've been there, they've been so supportive and absolutely fantastic. They're a great resource that for, for anyone that's starting out, I highly recommend it. If uh, you've never heard of them, then go check them out on Facebook and search for, for Utogs. But thanks again for watching and uh, I'll see you again very soon.